hey guys welcome to my channel brand live so today we're gonna be hanging out with wick fall styles and I'm gonna show you guys how to do a frontal sewing so first I just started off this is how I did my braid pattern and it's just a beehive in the back with the braids going down on the side and in the middle section of the hair straight back braids so I'm using this olive oil spray just to spray on her scalp so her, her scalp won't be itchy um, under her install and it'll be good and moisturized. So um, as you guys can see this frontal looks a little funky and I made a video on how I customized this baby so I'll link that up in the information bar. But yeah I'm just laying it flush on her scalp and telling her to hold it. And then I'm just going to braid it down the sides to get the hair out of the way. Um, this frontal was really hard to work with. A lot of um, flaws with this frontal that she got from the hair store it was horrible. And because of that, I wasn't able to secure it down good enough because it wasn't wide enough for the front of her head. So because of that, I wasn't able to sew down on the side braids like I wanted to. I wasn't able to get it as flush as I wanted it to be to her scalp. And it just it just wasn't really good. But the outcome was really good. So I was really excited for that portion. So what I'm doing now is just filling for the parts that um, need to be sewn over her ears. And then I just start and sew the back of the frontal down. So as you can see, I do put the needle through and I wrap it around and that is just to secure the thread and knot it. So I do this every single time I go up under the braid with my needle. Um, and this is just for extra security and just to have a knot in place so if one end of the string comes out is you know has an extra security um, so that the whole thing won't come out just because one portion did So before I cut the tabs off on the side, I do sew it down. So I just went in and felt for that last braid right above her ear. And I'm just sewing on that braid. I'm continuing to do my knotting method and making sure that I am pulling the lace taut so that um, it can be rather, rather close to her scalp. And the frontal can be flush with her skin um, like I said I had issues with that during this time because her frontal um, just wasn't wide enough and of course the lace the quality of the lace wasn't as good as quality so um, this is the struggle that I had to go through so I also parted in the front and I just sewed that down. I didn't do my wrapping method here just because I wanted this just to be like seamless since it was right in the front. So I just did it like this so it could be less lace on the surface and it would be no knots up top. So I continue to sew down braids just randomly within the frontal and like I said this is just to make sure that the frontal is on there really really good. You want to make sure that you're braiding, I'm sorry, you want to make sure that you're sewing 
on as many braids as you can to where it won't be noticeable when they're parting in their frontal but as you can see this frontal has this white strip in the front and on the sides so um, that's just a restriction to where she can't part in those areas so right now I just parted off her part and I'm just putting it in the style that I want to do and I'm just using some mousse just to get that in place so as you guys can see I start right at the tip of the frontal and we work our way back and I do the smiley face um, method of sewing I do um, again tie knots into every time that I go up under the braid and up under the web just to make sure that it's secure and I'm just gonna continue to sew in this smiley face pattern just going back and forth back and forth and also continuing to make sure I, I do a knot on every time that I, I go up under the weft. So as I'm coming back around, um, you guys may be asking, why don't you use a net? A lot of my clients don't like nets because it restricts them from scratching their scalp or getting to their scalp. Um, sometimes it just annoys them and then it also it kind of feels like they can't breathe in there so doing these knots also ensure that these gaps that I don't have anywhere to sew um, is going to stay secure because I'm tying it after every loop so as I'm coming back up to the front I'm just going to sew and then I'm going to start to curve up once I get onto the lace on the frontal. And I know some people use nylon thread for this, but I just use regular thread. I don't really like nylon thread. I have to find some that I like. But I just, I don't cut the tracks. I flip them over and I make sure that I'm sewing right on that fold and tying right on that fold and making sure it's really tight and really flat so yeah guys this is my process this is all I do and when I get closer to the top I just begin to sew straight straight across and I end right at the line where the hair stops so I decided to just go ahead and cut this band off of this frontal because it's so not cute. But like I said, you guys have to watch my customizing video of this frontal. And you'll see where I plucked it and everything. So you should definitely check that video out. So right here, I'm just taking out these baby hairs and just really getting them so the front will blend and with her skin now I did not tint this lace because the lace was not good quality so I didn't want to mess it up and I didn't know how the lace would react so I just said I'd rather it be lighter than her skin tone than to be too dark and we can't really fix that problem but with it being lighter you can always put um, foundation or concealer or powder powder and um, when I put this got to be glued gel on the front of the frontal, it really just made the frontal just fuse and melt into her skin. Um, although, of course, it's a different color, it, it looks much, much better once I did this process. And I did end up putting a little bit of powder foundation on the front of the frontal so if you run into this problem don't worry you can either put powder foundation on the back of the frontal before you lay it down or you can put it on top within those parts and things like that but this frontal was definitely a piece of work so just beware and I would not recommend buying a frontal from the hair store so I'm just going in with the Free spray just to set it all in place um, it was pretty set in stone before but I just wanted to use that as extra reinforcement 
and then I went in with my blow dryer. This is such an important step to go in with your blow dryer before you set the front. So I'm just using my stretchy peppers and I'm going in and tying down her edges. Now it's important to blow dry before you do this step because you do not want these papers to just stick onto your frontal and not be able to come off and then little pieces of paper will get stuck and you'll see what I'm talking about when I take it off but um, you just don't want it to be stuck onto your frontal. So my camera died on this part, but I used my Infinity Pro Conair 1 and 1 4th inch um, curling iron on 400 degrees to curl her hair in these big, pretty, voluminous curls. So right here, I'm just taking these papers off, and as you can see, it's super, super sticky, um, and you'd want to make sure that it's dry before you take them off, which hers definitely was. So I'm just taking the big side of this comb and just raking her curls out just to make them big and voluminous and um, just kind of going with the natural flow of the curls. This is the finished look. I'm gonna give you guys more visuals, of course, coming up, but um, I really had fun doing this frontal, and um, it was such a challenge, but I think it came out really cute, and she definitely loved the end results, and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and comment down below and tell me what you think. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.